Howdy again, folks. It's Rick at the Boondocking Bears. If you're ever RVing down in the Virginia Beach area, you got to take a little side trip over to Hampton Roads and Fort Monroe. It is an amazing place. It has a museum there, and that's the spot where Confederate President Jefferson Davis was incarcerated after the war. It's a really interesting fort to tour, and the, the amazing part is the museum they've done. You get to walk right through it. It is fabulous. Check it out. So when you get to Fort Monroe, the first thing you got to realize is you're not going to be able to take it all in. It's not that the fort is that huge. It is big, but it spans so much of American history from prior to the Civil War until its decommissioning only four years ago in 2011. So don't for a second think you're going to be able to absorb it all. You're not. So you can wander around the fort on the outside. You can actually drive around the fort. And there's tons of stuff to see outside. You can overlook Chesapeake Bay. You can see Norfolk on the other side. There's the Lincoln Gun. There's the uh, quarters where General Lee stayed there when he was building the fort. And one of the things I found most interesting after talking to the guide in the museum is when I was wandering around on the ramparts of the fort outside, there's these tiny little tombstones. And I wasn't sure what they were. And he explained that anybody that was stationed at the fort that had its pet die while there, they were entitled to bury the pet on the rampart and put a little tombstone there. So you can walk around and see all these little tombstones of the, of the dogs and cats that inhabited the fort in years gone by. It was a pretty cool little tradition. So the main reason I visited Fort Monroe was to see the cell where Jefferson Davis was incarcerated after the war. And that's part of the museum. So it's called the Casement Museum, and essentially it runs underneath the outside rampart of the fort towards Chesapeake Bay. And it's a series of arches and rooms, and it's really long. It's all made of brick, and it's very much like a dungeon. It's, it's kind of spooky. But in there, they've done a museum, and they've done a fantastic job. So when you first enter, it takes you through the beginning and the history of the fort and how it started, the settlements, and all that kind of stuff. And then as you progress down this dungeon, this long dungeon, it, it follows basically a chronological order. But of course, the part I wanted to see was Jefferson Davis's cell. And it was not disappointing. It was so stark. You can see why his health was deteriorating. It was cold. It was damp. What I found was really interesting is the federal government weren't real happy with Jefferson Davis. And his cot in his cell faced the inner wall where his door was. And on the wall was a huge American flag that he had to sit and stare at all day long. <laughs> it's kind of awesome, actually. Oh, and by the way, visiting Fort Monroe and even the museum is completely free, so it's a great deal. So all in all, was it worth it? Well, absolutely. When you enter, the volunteer ranger is really knowledgeable and helpful. He answers your question. There's a gift shop at the end, and there's far more than you can possibly take in as you go through this thing. So absolutely give it a shot. Have a look and I think you'll enjoy it. And the last piece of advice I can give you is don't do what I did. Don't put the camera in your pocket still running when you're finished the tour. Enjoy yourselves, folks. Mm -hmm.